Toma News presents Traveling into Space. Astronauts might one day hibernate their way to Mars. Getting to Mars from Earth takes a long time, as long as 200 days. A group of scientists funded by NASA think astronauts could pass most of that time by hibernating in a sleep chamber, much like what you see here. Each chamber is outfitted with tubes that lower the body's temperature as well as provide nutrition. An intranasal cooling system would lower the astronaut's temperature by 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which significantly reduces metabolism. The astronaut is fed via catheters attached to the thigh or chest, while another tube carries waste away. This result is what's called a torpor-induced state, using therapeutic hypothermia. One concern is muscle atrophy due to lack of use. Scientists think they can address this through neuromuscular electrical stimulation. As the astronauts approach Mars, the wake-up cycle begins. Warming pads slowly raise the body's temperature. It takes roughly one hour for every one degree rise in body temperature. Fully awake after their long nap, the astronauts are ready to begin their Mars mission. Can the human body survive traveling to Mars? In a recent opinion article, U.S. President Barack Obama stressed his goal of not only sending humans to Mars, but making it possible for people to stay there for extended periods of time by 2030. But the journey alone won't be an easy one. Scientists say one of the dangers of traveling to Mars is exposure to radiation. Without the protection of Earth's atmosphere, humans are vulnerable to the sun's gamma rays and hot neutrons, which can cause cancer. A shield made of lead or water, especially in the form of ice, could be used to absorb the radiation and protect the human body. Spending less time in space could also reduce the effects of radiation. During space travel, humans are also prone to osteoporosis. Astronauts in space have been recorded losing 1 to 2 percent of bone mass per month. That could mean 10 to 25 percent of skeletal mass being lost during a year-long round trip to Mars. While exercise aboard spacecrafts may help humans retain muscle and bone mass, Astronauts have still been recorded losing a significant amount during travel. Other effects of space travel on the human body include changes in the circulatory system and the immune system. Meanwhile, even after humans do make it to Mars, they will still need to battle significantly lower temperatures and a thin and low-pressure atmosphere. NASA's laser-powered spacecraft aims to reach Mars in 72 hours. NASA scientist Philip Lubin is working on perfecting laser technology that could propel a light spacecraft to Mars in as little as three days. Photons emitted from excited atoms in a laser have energy and momentum, which forms the basis of laser-based propulsion. Photons are released in a beam from a laser. When photons from a laser array reflect off an object, their energy is translated into a push that's capable of moving objects like a spacecraft. Rather than using a giant laser a la the Death Stars, researchers imagine an array made up of a large number of amplifiers that sync up and act like one big laser. The spacecraft launched with this technology will include a robotic probe and a large reflective sail. The spacecraft will be light because no fuel is needed. And this spacecraft could be accelerated to 30% the speed of light, which was previously unheard of. This technology could produce enough momentum to get a robotic spacecraft to Mars in three days and send a manned shuttle to Mars in a month. Using photonic propulsion, interstellar travel may be possible, and we could get a probe to Earth's nearest star, Alpha Centauri, in as little as 15 years. In comparison, our current technology takes four to eight months to get to Mars. It took 37 years for the Voyager 1 spacecraft to reach the edge of our solar system. 20-kilometer high space elevator gets patented in the U.S. and the U.K. A new technology with the potential to change how spacecrafts enter orbit has recently been patented in the U.K. and the U.S. To get shuttles into space, rockets currently use large amounts of fuel and usually also carry extra fuel. Canadian firm Thought Technology aims to change that by essentially allowing astronauts to travel partway into space on an electrical elevator. The inflatable structure could, in theory, stand up to 20 kilometers high, over 20 times higher than the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. 
From the top, spacecrafts could launch into orbit in a single stage, eliminating the initial need for vertical launch rockets. Inventor Ben Quine told the CBC that the tower could resist lightning, meteors, as well as Category 5 hurricanes. The company's CEO, Carolyn Roberts, believes the invention, along with the development of self-landing rocket technologies, could herald a new era in space transport. SpaceWorks believes the key to space travel may be artificially induced sleep. A NASA-funded study written by aerospace engineering company SpaceWorks says that keeping astronauts unconscious during long flights in space cuts down the equipment and resources needed on the shuttle and also eliminates the negative psychological effects of long hauls in space. According to the NASA-funded study on cryogenic sleep, a human body can be placed in hibernation by simply lowering the body temperature to 93 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowered body temperature causes the body's heart rate and metabolism to decrease. The body will subsist on intravenous feeding tubes that pump the necessary nutrients into the body. Other tubes will drain urine as well as monitor the body. According to mock-ups, a torpor status habitat can hold six astronauts at once and robotic arms will ensure everyone's basic needs are met. So far, humans are only able to maintain stasis for 14 days, although the trip from Earth to Mars is expected to take up to nine months, or about 274 days. NASA has declined to fund the second stage of the research, though, and SpaceWorks, citing its potential therapeutic benefits, is now looking into using the technology here on Earth. Scientists hope to launch interstellar fleet of laser-propelled spacecraft. A hit team of renowned scientists, Silicon Valley elites, and a billionaire businessman have come together to launch a fleet of postage-stamp-sized interstellar spacecraft. Sounds like the pitch for a bad Bond movie, right? Well, if it was, 007 would have his hands full. Because this team includes Scientist Supreme Dr. Stephen Hawking, Russian billionaire Yuri Milner, and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. All technology, including the camera for the tiny interstellar spacecraft, will be placed inside a postage stamp-sized chip. Called a star chip, this device would come with a light sail to form a nanocraft. The sail has a surface that would use Earth-based laser light to propel it along. The lasers would come from a mile-wide laser array potentially situated 13,000 feet above sea level in the Atacama Desert in South America. Using light energy from the 100-gigawatt laser array, the team plans to send a fleet of these nanocrafts to our closest star system, Alpha Centauri. If successful, a nanocraft could travel at 20% of the speed of light, or 134.2 million miles per hour, using laser light propulsion. At that speed, a nanocraft could traverse the 25 trillion miles to Alpha Centauri in a matter of decades, while a current spacecraft would take thousands of years. Dubbed Breakthrough Starshot, Milner has invested around $100 million in the nanocraft concept. However, it will still potentially cost billions and could take up to 30 years to get a swarm of the devices into space if the concept is shown to be successful. Huge balloon capsule will take you to space in 2017. For a lofty $75,000, you'll be able to be part of a new tourism effort in the Voyager capsule and be carried to the edge of space by the end of 2017. Worldview Enterprises is offering to send passengers to an altitude of 100,000 feet above the ground in a capsule carried up by a giant balloon. Once fully inflated with helium, the balloon will expand to about the size of a football stadium. The capsule will be equipped with large windows and will be able to carry up to six passengers and two crew members. The ascent into the stratosphere will take roughly 90 minutes, and the vessel will cruise for about two hours before descending. The balloon will separate from the capsule at 50,000 feet above the ground, at which point the para wing will guide the capsule to the landing site. On October 24, 2015, Worldview launched a successful test flight with a 1,000-pound replica of the capsule. The company is now ready to begin full-scale testing in mid-July 2017 and hopes to bring space tourism to the masses at the end of the same year. Suntory hopes to make whiskey in space for better taste. Striving to improve the taste of their spirits, Japanese distiller Suntory plans to send whiskey into space. It's known that alcoholic beverages develop a mellow flavor when aged for years on end. Whiskey aged in an environment with stable temperatures and suppressed convection and shaking produces a mellower taste. The Japanese whiskey distiller said it would send a total of six samples of its whiskeys and other alcoholic beverages to the International Space Station, where they will be kept for at least a year to study the effect of microgravity on the aging process. The samples will be carried to the space station on August 16th on a Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, transfer vehicle named Konotori. 
Once the samples are returned to Earth after a year in space, blenders will assess their flavors while researchers subject the liquids to scientific analysis. The reason why whiskey tastes better with age has yet to be explained. The result of the space experiment will be followed closely by whiskey enthusiasts worldwide. UK to build the country's first spaceport by 2018. The UK government is planning to build a spaceport in the country by 2018. It would be the first of its kind outside the US. Eight aerodromes in the UK have been shortlisted, with Scotland home to six of the possible locations. The spaceport will be built at a remote site where regular air traffic is low. The ideal location needs a longer than usual runway length of 3,000 meters or more, as space planes travel at far greater speeds than standard planes and need more room to land. The spaceport could be used to launch satellites as well as commercial space flights. The government hopes that the port will eventually become a part of Virgin Galactic's space tourism project. Virgin Galactic plans to take passengers to a height of around 100 kilometers above the Earth, while allowing them to experience about six minutes of zero gravity. It is reported that Virgin already had talks with Scottish ministers about establishing a site at Lossimouth. SpaceX to fly two tourists around the moon next year. This week, SpaceX announced bold plans to next year fly two paying passengers around the moon using technology that's still in development. In 2018, SpaceX hopes to fly two private citizens deeper into space than any human has journeyed previously. The two travelers will trek some 400,000 miles around and beyond the moon during the seven-day mission before looping back to Earth. Before training for the mission, SpaceX says each of the unnamed passengers will undergo a series of tests for their health and fitness. The passengers are set to travel aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, shot into orbit by a multi-stage Falcon Heavy rocket. The still-in-design rocket's first stage consists of three reusable rockets that produce half a million pounds of thrust. After separating, the central rocket propels the payload into orbit, where it continues on its voyage. SpaceX founder Elon Musk says the travelers will be trained for emergencies. However, the Crew Dragon spacecraft, which is also still being developed, will be mainly piloted autonomously. The crew can monitor real-time ship diagnostics, change the temperature, and take in views through one of the vessel's four windows. The spacecraft will conduct a flyby of the surface of the moon before traveling further out into space, where no human has gone before. It will then use the moon's gravity to slingshot back toward Earth. SpaceX hopes to launch the mission in late 2018, following a series of tests on the rocket and spacecraft. The identity of those traveling remains unknown, but one thing's for sure, they're very brave individuals indeed, and possibly also Scrooge McDuck Rich. NASA's Orion spacecraft prepares for first test launch. The capsule that will bring humans one step closer to setting foot on Mars is slated to make its first flight in 2018. Five months ago, NASA technicians began the first assembly weld on the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, or MPCV, spacecraft. The Orion's pressure vessel, the part filled with air for astronauts, started out in seven pieces. Those pieces were fused together by mid-January. The pressure vessel was then transported from the Michaud Assembly Facility in Louisiana to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It traveled on a super guppy cargo aircraft equipped with a compartment that is 25 feet tall, 25 feet wide, and 111 feet long, and it arrived on February 1st. At the Kennedy Space Center, the Orion will be equipped with subsystems, outer layers, and a heat shield, everything it needs to complete its first mission, which NASA has announced will be an unmanned test flight to the moon in 2018 to check its structural integrity. The little guy is already being heralded America's next great leap in space exploration. That's a lot of pressure for your first assignment, but you got this, Orion. Astronauts' hearts become more spherical in space. Results from a study conducted on a dozen astronauts show that the heart becomes more rounded when exposed to near zero gravity for extended periods. On Earth, the heart's muscles work against the pull of the planet's gravity to pump blood to the brain and to other parts of the body. The heart loses muscle mass when it doesn't work as hard as microgravity. 
ultrasound imaging comparing astronauts' heart before, during, and after spaceflight shows that the heart in space becomes more spherical by a factor of 9.4 percent. When these astronauts return to Earth after extended stays in outer space, they commonly pass out or become lightheaded when their hearts are unable to adapt to a sudden drop in blood pressure when standing. The study also reports that the astronauts' hearts return to its normal elongated shape shortly after returning to Earth. For $75,000, Worldview can lift a passenger 30 kilometers into space by a hot air balloon. The balloon is propelled by 1.1 cubic meters of helium and guided by a steerable parachute. Six passengers and two pilots are transported within a pressurized capsule. After a 90-minute ascent to its peak height, the balloon will remain in the stratosphere for another two hours before the capsule drifts back down to Earth. At 30 kilometers, the balloon is over twice the altitude reached by conventional airplanes, but it is still far from the outer space where weightlessness is experienced. The initial launch is expected to take place at Spaceport America in New Mexico. Other companies such as Virgin Galactic and Xcor have also presented similar plans for space tourism.